Where's that treasure? What's up, everybody? It's the Pirate Stacker coming at you Tuesday. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I have just not been able to get into the swing of things. I'm busy. I just don't want to be busy. The wife and daughter are out of school for the summer. And I just want to have fun with them. I just want to do stuff and hang out. And yeah, it's tough when you work from home. Uh, today, we are talking about something I've been meaning to talk about for a minute, the Iraqi dinar. I know, I know, polarizing. Uh, before I get into that, I gotta give a shout out for Little Pirate making me this Lucky Charm piece. And look at this, she went into my pirate loot and found a coin to put in for luck. We got a fish on there. All these Lucky Charms, uh, I love it. I love that she does little crafts and trinkets. And this is to bring me good luck. It hangs up here next to my pirate display. And uh, I think it's fantastic. One of the joys of having daughters, without a doubt. Without a doubt. All right. Iraqi dinar time. Uh, I'm going to start this off. I'm going to say it now, and then as people join in and watch, everybody's going to complain, and I'm going to say it again, and at the end, I'm going to say it again. I am not advocating for anybody, anybody, to buy Iraqi dinar. It is a bad financial decision, okay? That's what I'm saying. That is my stance. Bad financial decision, okay? Okay. Does that stop me from buying the Iraqi dinar? Absolutely not. I enjoy I enjoy making buy, bad financial decisions. <laughs> uh, you should know that about me by now. I love to gamble. I like to speculate. I like to have fun. And some things are just fun. And to me, it's fun. I don't know if I'm a thrill seeker. I don't know if I'm really a collector at heart. I don't really know what it is. But again, I want to preface, I definitely am bad with money management. I do not do good investments. I could have put this money to many other more useful places. I had a few bucks laying around. I had... My own reasons in my mind to play with it, and that's what I did. So today, let me show you some stuff. Uh, I have been buying some Iraqi dinar off of eBay as of recently. Uh, I'm still waiting. There is I have the whole lineup here of all their new currencies. And when I say new, I mean new since we took Saddam Hussein out of Iraq. And... Uh, and did away with him. So this is the new denomination post Saddam. Uh, basically worthless outside of Iraq. Uh, even in Iraq, the inflation is terrible. The values on these are very, very little. Uh, a thousand dinar is like 90 cents. Thousand dinar, right? 90 cents. Not amazing. Um, but on the flip side, it is a very pretty currency. Uh, and I'll tell you a few of my thoughts on this particular currency. Uh, I'm waiting on a 50,000 note that I purchased. Yes, I did pay like 64 bucks for it shipped. Uh, yes, it is only worth like $38 US, something ridiculous. Um, and that is what it is. I am not concerned about that. Uh, it's cool. It's great looking. You can look them up online. I don't have one. We're still trying to get that here. It should have been delivered. Of course, the post office sucks and it's not here. Nobody's fault. It just is what it is. That is the highest denomination Iraqi dinar is the 50,000 note. This is the next highest, the 25,000 note. 
Now this is beautiful. Another thing I like is the larger the currency, numerically, the larger the currency is as well physically. Um, so the larger currencies are physically larger than the smaller ones, as you can see here, right? Kind of cool. So this is a 25,000 note, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, to me, the colors on it are fantastic. It has a whole wealth of security features, which I think is very cool. And it's just a beautiful piece of paper. <laughs> uh, now this could eventually be worth something. As of right now, it doesn't do much for me. It's going to sit and it will be a collectible. And that's really all I'm looking for it to be. Next up, 10,000 note. I got a couple of these bad boys. Cool, they're green. I don't know who the guy is. I don't even care who the guy is. Uh, it's always just interesting to me to see other countries' money because it's so different from our currency, our cash here in the US. Uh, again, multiple security features on their currency and they don't really want anybody counterfeiting it. And uh, that's smart, even though it's virtually worthless. <laughs> uh, and I'll get into the history of that in just a minute. Let's just look at some of the currency and then we'll get into the hows and whys and who's and what's and all of the above. Next up, 5,000. Boom, another beautiful note. Kind of a purpley color. I don't know if that's coming through or not. Look at that. Look at those colors. Beautiful. 5,000 dinar. Beautiful. I think that is a really nice piece. I like it. I like, I like having it in my collection. All of the things. Next up, we got a $1,000, 1,000, 1,000 dinar. No, kind of sand colored. It's got some beautiful colors to it though. Cool patterns. Uh, it has kind of a rainbow hue from kind of a beige to a green to a beige again. And look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I just, I think they're neat. <laughs> I like the colors. I think they're just a neat piece. We got a few of those. Still moving on. Let's bring out some others. We got a 500 note. Also very cool. This one's kind of really neat. Look at that. And again, these get a little smaller as the, as the denominations get smaller. Now I looked it up and it said basically you can buy for a thousand dinar, you can buy two pounds of bananas. <laughs> uh, not a lot of value in that. And you know, bananas here for two pounds, I think you're looking at a dollar. So if that gives you any idea of what you're talking about, this is a 500 note, very cool, very cool. Again, this is the middle of the video. I'm going to reiterate. I am not advocating for you to go buy Iraqi dinar. It's a terrible investment. It's not an investment at all. I will tell you my reasons, which mostly include the fact that I enjoy making bad financial decisions. That's why I'm sharing. So you don't have to. You can just look at these and go, those are pretty neat. I don't think I really want to buy any of those with a good US money. I think I would rather just look at pirates. And that's what we can do. That's a 250. And now we got a 50, the smallest paper denomination. Also very cool. Neat designs, neat features, beautiful notes. Now, one of the things, oh, one of the things I think is very neat about uh, their money, they also have a coin. And most people don't realize the coins themselves, they have three of them. And they're all duplicates of each other. They are different metals, but it's the same front and back. Although I don't know what the writing means. 
But there you go. It's like a brass, an aluminum, copper maybe. And this is basically a 25 dinar, the small one. It's about the size of a dime. The one that's about the size of a nickel, that's a 50 dinar. And the one that's a little smaller than a quarter, that's a 100 dinar. Kind of interesting, right? I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that that is equal to two of those notes or, or that one is equal to one of those notes. I think that's kind of cool. So it's neat that, to have the whole set. I'm excited to get that 50 in. That will be very cool. Now, why? Why now? Well, I'm one of the suckers way back when got caught up in the scam. 2008, maybe, and everyone's like, oh, the dinar is gonna, gonna convert. It's gonna revalue. So the deal behind it is, if you know nothing at all, I'm gonna give you a very simple breakdown. The very simple breakdown is, the Iraqi dinar used to be worth like one dinar was like three dollars and fifty cents. Oil rich company, good value to their paper, and the Kuwaiti dinar basically the same scenario. Oil rich country, this that the other. Uh, we went in, we revalued Kuwait's dinar. We had took over, did a bunch of stuff, freed them, or whatever the case was, and. We revalued their dinar back to what it was previously, basically. So it still is worth like $3 US to every one dinar. But there was a lot of talk when we unseated Saddam Hussein that we were going to do the same in Iraq. For whatever reason, everybody thought that was going to happen. And maybe it was going to happen, but the cat got out of the bag and that was the end of that. They're like, nope, we ain't doing it now. Who knows? A lot of people jumped on. I got excited. I remember I had bought like 250,000 dinar for like, I don't know, like 200 bucks. Something like that. And it was like, oh, if it goes three times, I'm sitting on three quarters of a million dollars. Yes. That's awesome. Well, it didn't happen. Now, some of the reasons people thought that might happen, other places have done it. But what, is, what does Iraq have going for it? Well, it is the second highest producer of oil in the Middle East. Only Saudi Arabia produces more oil than Iraq. And when you look at the Middle East, the values of their currencies, Iraq is behind everybody. Like, way behind. All of the other Middle Eastern countries, with the exception of Iran, because of sanctions and such, but all the other Middle Eastern oil-rich countries, their dollars are very strong compared to the U.S. Now, I will get into a little bit of history. There is a lot of talk that Saddam actually was trying to go on the gold standard, was trying to do this and that. If you know anything about the petrodollar, we didn't want that stuff. We definitely don't want countries going on the gold standard. That ruins it for us, where we throw U.S. dollars around like they are gold, even though they're hot garbage, right? So, and, and I'm not just spewing this. Qaddafi, a whole bunch of other people have been put in the similar place and having been removed by the U.S. government to protect the U.S. dollar. Iraq used to be a very, very gold-rich country. The talk is they are still a gold-rich country, as well as oil-rich. Their money being worth a fraction, a fraction of what it used to be, doesn't make sense. Not in my mind. Now, we have blocked them from being able to be traded on all the different currency sites. You basically have to buy them from a third-party or middleman on eBay or some other site that's been set up. Uh, and it's basically kind of a racket now. You know, people pump it, talk a bunch of stuff. People get excited. Really, people are making money off it, just like silver and gold. We know the drill. You know, if you pump it up and you make it sound awesome and people want to buy it, guess what? I'm selling it. <laughs> no wonder I'm pumping it up. I'm selling the stuff, right? It makes sense. Um so that's one of those things that you get a lot of people getting excited. 
there's a ton of chatter about the Iraqi dinar. Now, what interested me, I got out a long time ago. I bought it for X amount. I sold it for X amount. I probably lost 50 bucks. I don't even care. It was what it was. Recently, however, we have a few things happen. We have BRICS that has assembled. A lot of countries buying gold and silver, stocking up. They want to back their currencies with metals. I know, I know, I don't need a history lesson from any of you guys. I'm just sharing my basic understanding. So what happens is a bunch of countries are trying to get on board. Basically, hey, the U.S. has treated us like shit. Let's jump in with these other guys, you know. Brazil, Russia, China, India, South Africa. Now, there's some 20 or 30 other countries that have already uh, submitted their applications to get in. They haven't been let in yet. Guess what? They're going to get let in. Uh, I suspect it will be all at once. I also suspect when they do get let in that they are going to potentially have a revaluation. Do I think it's going to revalue to $3 US? No. Do I think the dollar is crashing and this has the potential to go up against the US dollar? Yes. Uh, Saudi Arabia just denounced the petrodollar. That's the US stranglehold on everybody has to buy US dollars to buy fuel. That's no longer a thing. Is that going to impact it? 100%. Iraq starts making people buy their stuff in gold or Iraqi dinars or whatever the case. And this value will climb. Uh, I don't have a lot with the 50,000 that's coming. I think I got something like, who even knows? I don't know. Maybe 135,000 dinar, 140,000 dinar. I'm not looking to buy more. I'm not looking to make this a bigger thing. I thought it was cheap enough and fun enough to pick up a little assortment, put it all together, stick it in the safe. And, uh, you know, it's pirate silly investment. Uh, more of a collection than an investment, as I said before. So that's kind of the thing. Will it get into bricks? I don't know. Will the value go up? I don't know. Could it potentially? Stranger things have happened. Is the U.S. dollar value going down? 100%. Inflation is real. Countries are kicking our dollar to the curb in exchange for other countries' monies. Um, all of that is going to make our money worth less. So at the very least, this will go up in strength against the U.S. dollar at some point. How do I cash it in? No idea. Probably have to go to Europe or the Middle East somewhere, go to Dubai maybe, and cash it in if it ever became worth something. I'd probably cash it over to British Pounds, uh, although they will crash just like anybody else. I'd probably go to like Dubai, like old uh, international stacker, and go to the gold market in Abu Dhabi and try and buy gold with my Iraqi dinar if it actually became worth something. That's probably what I would look to do. Is that silly? Probably. Will it ever happen? 99% for sure. Point, 99% sure it won't. But do I feel bad about this? No, I don't feel bad. Look how cool it looks. This is loot. This is treasure. I enjoy it. That's really all it is. I just wanted to share the Iraqi dinar, the beauty of the note, if you've heard some things, why you may be hearing things again now. Is it the biggest scam in the world? Potentially. Have you been ripped off? Maybe. Was I ripped off? Not at all. I happily and willingly made a profit for somebody else collecting these notes, and I'm happy to do so. Is it a pipe dream? Maybe. I, I don't care. I mean, people say my... Copper is a pipe dream, right? People say the copper is nuts. Pirate, you're wasting your money on that copper. That's so dumb. Pirate, why are you buying poker chips? That's so stupid. You could be buying gold. Look, I do not do things for financial gain most of the time. This whole channel is not based upon financial gain. 
fact, this channel costs me more money than I've ever made by a lot. So it's fun. I'm having fun. I hope you had a little bit of fun today. I hope you enjoyed the show. That's it. That's me and my two cents on the Iraqi dinar. Tell me what you think. Do you own some? Are you going to get some? Did you have some and sold it like I did? Uh, what are your thoughts? Tell me in the comments below. Are you a believer to the moon? Is this going to revalue? Are you watching every day to see what happens? I know there's a lot of people that really are. Um, again, you know, we're just having fun with it here on my channel. But I hope you at least enjoyed the show. Uh, please like, please subscribe, hit the comments, uh, leave a like, a thumbs up, all of the above. And we have members. Thank you to my channel members. I put out content exclusive for them every week. We're having a good time. Have a great day, guys. That's it for me. Pirate out. Arg. <laughs>